Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another episode in the Assassin's Creed Origins Countdown series. Guys, this is the number one thing I'm excited about. We're here at the end, and we're only 48 hours, two days away from the release of Assassin's Creed Origins. So, I just, first of all, before we go any further, want to thank you all for watching this series and enjoying it. And giving me feedback, I didn't think I'd be back doing videos before Assassin's Creed Origins came out. I said I wouldn't be doing any videos on it or covering it or doing anything, but I couldn't stay away from your beautiful savages. So I, I'm here. I am. I've loved making this series. Just something small, you know. It's, I, you know, it's not massive, but it's something small that I could, you know, give back to you guys for everything you've given me. And I didn't think I'd be doing videos on Origins after it came out, at least initially. But I think I will be. No, I definitely will be. So. Anyway, here we go. Without further ado, the number one thing, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about in Assassin's Creed Origins is the time period. I know. I know. Really, that's number one? Yeah, it's number one. Time period? Are you kidding me? This is the location I've wanted to see in Assassin's Creed since the Ezio trilogy. This has been, like, m top of the list. This and Ancient Greece, which I think it might be the next thing. But... Ancient Egypt, or at least, you know, Egypt in, in this sense back this far, in, you know, BC, it, it, it's exactly where it needs to be. It's where it needs to be for two major reasons. One, just for being an awesome setting to place an Assassin's Creed game. They've been able to build a massive world, it's the right time to do this sort of setting, where they've built an RPG-style game within its setting. You've got great historical figures like Caesar and Cleopatra, like I've talked about in some of these other episodes of the series. You've got plenty of these historical locations and things to see. And it's just a great place in terms of like combat, you know, to have swords, spears, shields, bows, and things like that, to have that sort of stuff. Horses, uh, chariots, to have gameplay elements like a Colosseum style thing. Just having a setting like this means, especially for a game like Assassin's Creed, means great gameplay features great story, great history, it just means great Assassin's Creed, like it's a recipe for a great Assassin's Creed game. When you're going to somewhere like Victorian London in the 1800s, it's a recipe for, should not be here, why I, Why do I have a rope launcher? If you need a rope launcher, it's not a setting for a game, it's beyond ridiculous. This is the perfect sorts of setting for a game, which is why I'm so happy they've gone back this far. It's it's crazy to me that it took this long to go back this far, but I think, look, the time's right, the technology's right. As I said in the last episode, with having a game where they can build a massive open world like this. The second major reason this is such an important setting historically was they could have gone back even further, right? To ancient, ancient Egypt, building the pyramids, that sort of stuff, like people suspected. But the reason this is the perfect date, where it's the Roman Empire, the Roman occupation of Egypt, is because... Technologically speaking, it's perfect for history in terms of the Assassin Order, having certain weapons, being able to ride horses, all that cool stuff, plenty of other gameplay features, but also sequels. Hear me out here, I've been talking for a long time, been an advocate of why is Ezio still the face of Assassin's Creed when we haven't had an Ezio game in six years, seven years, you know what I mean? But because he had so many games, was so amazing and incredible and they really put the time into him, he became the face of the franchise. He became Assassin's Creed. I'm the biggest Ezio nut hugger you're ever going to meet. But, you need a new face. You can't have 17,000 Assassins since Ezio, yet none of them, no one knows who they are. People just know Ezio, the casual player. So, you need someone that can be the new face. Bayek, there's no reason I can't I can think of that Bayek shouldn't be the next face of the franchise, especially if he's the origin of the order. He can continue to develop that, continue to go through different things, and construct different parts of the order or spread it throughout the world. That's why I think something like it's a perfect setting because you can go to other locations in this sort of time period. You can go to Rome in ancient Rome during the Roman Empire. You could have a game in ancient Greece. You know, only 10 years after this game set. You know, this is a time period that's amazing because you can build future games from it with the same character. This could be the next big thing for the franchise. There's no reason it shouldn't be. I think it should be. I think it has to be. But we'll see how it goes at the very least. Like 
Assassin's Creed seem to do, they seem to at least for a few games stay in that sort of time period because they've built all the assets for it. Like, you know, how they went from the American Revolution to French Revolution, Golden Age of Pirates, uh, Victorian London. They kind of stayed there because it was easy to build games because they'd had so many assets already built into it and gameplay features built into it with guns and things like that. But now that they've spent the time doing this sort of thing, they're not going to jump to a completely new era. They're going to kind of stay around the era, whether it's new characters or only, you know, 50 years ahead or 50 years back. They're going to kind of hover around here for a few games, I suspect, just because they've built these assets. Why not utilize them again and build from them and improve them? I think that's important. I think it's pretty obvious that they'll do that. They've always done that on some level, whether it's to have an Ezio sequel or to just have other games in similar time periods. So... I think that's why it's also important, because it's a great historical location, not just for an individual game, but for follow-up games. So that's why the setting and time period is the number one thing that I'm excited about and love about Assassin's Creed Origins. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you again so much for watching this series, and enjoying it, and giving me feedback, and let me know what you think, what's your number one thing you're most excited about in Assassin's Creed Origins. Let me know in the comments down below, and please like this video, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys for Assassin's Creed Origins content in two days. I don't know if I'll have a video in two days, but, you know, that's when it comes out, so it's fucking sick and good and fox. But, is that a meme still? I don't know. Um, but, as well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't run any ads on this channel, so if you feel like supporting me somewhere, just head over to patreon.com slash, as always, chuck me a couple of bucks if you feel like it. There's plenty of awesome exclusive podcast content with myself and James over there, plus other cool perks. We're going to be doing a Let's Play series that's exclusive to Patreon over there very soon. Uh, so thank you guys again for watching this video and this series. I appreciate it greatly. It's so good to be back and I'll see you guys for Assassin's Creed Origins.